Hi. In this uh, clip, uh, the question is, is it really measurably possible to get paid a higher price uh, for a service value? And the answer is yes on several counts. First of all, there has been a number of, of sort of, you know, a fair, fair amount of research done on service management corporations. They tend to be very large ones like FedEx versus UPS and the post office, for example, or uh, uh, huge hotel chains and, and which ones get the best ratings from frequent uh, beating planners and so forth, uh, as opposed to independent privately held distribution companies within your channel. Uh, but general research you know, has concluded that if a service company has distinctive service value in the customer's mind, not the service provider's mind. We all think we're great. We all think our kids are great. But measurably, objectively, the, the, the customer thinks that we're great. And for example, on a scale from one to five, if three is average service and 4.0 is good service, to get to 4.5, 4.6 ratings from customers, that's six times more difficult than achieving 4.0 service, which is tough. It's not easy if everybody else is doing a three. But if we're distinctively better, then as a general rule, we can get about five to 10% more than our, our mediocre competitors value added. Now distribution, the value add is pretty easy. It's margin percent. So to make my math easy, if, if uh, you know, a mediocre distributor is out there at 20% margin and we got last look at an extra 5 to 10%, 5 to 10% of 20% is an extra one or two points. Now, if we could get all things being equal, last look at an extra one or two points, most of that margin dollar flows to the bottom line. We may pay some incentive compensation. Otherwise, there is no more activity costs. There are no more phone calls, no more picks in the warehouse, no more stops of trucks. Uh, it's, it's just you know pure flow through the bottom line. So there's nothing more powerful in a, in a distribution business, given a sort of a status quo, than just raising prices and not losing business. But what's interesting about research is that not only does the distinctive service value provider get a higher price, they get a bigger share of the customer also. Uh, a classic example would be when Federal Express invented the overnight letter market very quickly. UPS knocked it off, but but they were hemmed in a bit by their service models. They weren't quite as user friendly as far as pickup times and so forth as, as uh, FedEx. And then the post office came out with their express mail, but uh, they wouldn't guarantee it. So when it all settled out, FedEx had about 65% share of, of the market they invented. Uh, UPS might have had 30, and the post office only had 5%, even though they're only charging half the price. But again, they said, well, but, we, we won't, but, but we're user unfriendly and we won't guarantee that it'll get there. Um, so there's an example of, of higher prices and a bigger share. Uh, I saw a similar thing back in the 80s when, when Marriott was really on a service management tear and pioneering really service management value to the next level before anybody else got hip to it. It was a period of about four years running. They were rated the number one easiest to do business hotel chain uh, in their, their economic strata uh, by frequent meeting planners. And sure enough, their, their prices were about 5 to 10% higher than the value added of their competitors. And they had a higher room occupancy rate by about 5 percentage points against Hyatt and, and uh, Weston and people like that. Uh, so it is possible. Now, and on another front, you do it within your own business. When you start to do customer profitability ranking reports, and you isolate what the margin percent is for a customer versus their cost to serve, you will find that you've got twins. You've got two customers. They're the same kind of customer. They're the same category, niche of, of customer. They both do roughly the same volume. But the good twin is giving a little bit more profit, and they've got a significantly lower cost to serve because they're a very smart, disciplined kind of buyer, actually. Then the bad twin is a very disorganized, uh, oh my gosh, we're out of it, we need it now, rush it over immediately while they're sitting there having downtime issues and, and, uh, and creating lots of paper costs for both of you. And uh, <laughs> so not only do they have a lot of dysfunction in their system and want you to eat the cost of that noise, but now they're so pressed, they're coming in constantly badgering you for lower prices because they're not making any money because they're so inefficient. Uh, so it, it, it all adds up in a way. 
And so the question now is, how do we find those very best guys and do a lot more with them? How do we identify what their best buying practices are to use those uh, to recycle into our customers that are, are dysfunctional? Not not intentionally so. I mean, they're good people. Maybe they're just hyper-focused in one part of the TPC ele- elephant. Because if we can start to you know expand their thinking and work with them in a, in a positive, proactive, going forward, win-win kind of way, uh, there is a lot of uh, extra economic benefit for both sides. So that's it. Thanks.